Hello everyone, hope you are doing well. So in this video, we'll discuss the second problem of lead code weekly contest 354, a medium level problem, but accuracy on the lower side, roughly 25% or so. Uh, we'll see why that is, okay? So the problem name is maximum beauty of an array after applying operations. So you are given a zero index array nums and a non-negative integer k, okay? In one operation, you can do the following. Choose an index i that hasn't been chosen before from the range 0 to nums of length minus 1. That means choose any index. You just have to choose every index once. That's it. At most once, right? Replace nums of i with any integer from the range nums of i minus k and nums of i plus k. The beauty of the array is the length of the longest subsequence consisting of equal elements. Return the maximum possible beauty of the array nums after applying the operation any number of times. Note that you can apply the operation to each index only once. Okay. A subsequence of an array is a new array generated from original array by deleting some elements, possibly none, okay, without changing the order of the remaining elements. This is what it says. Let's see. Let's see the example and try to understand it. So we have an array. This is the array and this is the value of k. So what we can do, we can choose every index, okay. It's not necessary to choose every index, but you can choose every index at most once. Now this value 4 can be replaced by any value in range 4 minus 2 because 4 minus k to 4 plus 2 getting it 4 plus 2 so that means a value in range 2 to 6 this is what we can do similarly this 6 can be replaced by any value in this range 6 minus 2 and 6 plus 2 so this is 4 to 8 this is what it says okay so every every element just see the first element range 2 6 you can change 4 in this you can change 6 like this 4 to 8 you can change 1 to any element from minus 1 to 3 and similarly 2 can be changed to any element from 0 to 4 right now what we have to do we have to basically return the maximum possible beauty of the array what is the beauty it's the length of the longest subsequence consisting of equal elements right now whenever someone asks you to tell you a subsequence it's basically you just have to see the frequency of elements right in most of the cases like for example here if you change this element to any particular value suppose i i replace this 4 with 4 i mean I, I i i do not change it it remains as 4 now this 6 can be changed into any value in this range so this becomes 4 this 1 can be changed to any value okay now we are targeting to make every value 4 okay we are seeing that what happens how many elements can i make as 4 this cannot be made so let's make it one only okay similarly this can be made as 4 what i mean to say just see after doing a transformation, uh, one of the possible transformations, your array looks like 4, 4, 1, 4. So how many elements do you have with the same value? It's 3. So that is why the answer is 3 here. Right? That is why the answer is 3. That is what is shown here. Right? So ultimately, whenever the sequence, subsequence term is basically to confuse you, you just have to uh, see that which particular value okay, can be our most occurring element. That's what we need to show. Similarly here, it's 1, 1, 1, 1. So obviously the range of all the elements will be same, right? Initially also they all are same. So that means 1 occurs 4 times and hence your answer is 4, right? Because the beauty is, maximum possible beauty is, the beauty of an array is the length of the longest subsequence consisting of equal elements. That means you have to find equal elements, the maximum frequency of an element that you can have after the transformations, right? This is what we need to do. The length of the array is 10 raised to power 5 and just see the constraint. This will help us in solving the problem. It says that each element can go up to 10 raised to power 5 from 0 to 10 raised to power 5 and k can also go from 0 to 10 raised to power 5. What does this mean? Nums is in range this. k is also in this range, right? This is nums of i, this is k. So what could be the minimum range? What could be the minimum possible value an element can take? That is the minimum value that I can have is 0 and the maximum value I can subtract that is k. The maximum value I can subtract is 10 raised to power 5, right? This, let's see the range of values, okay? The maximum value that I can have of an element is 10 raised to power 5 plus the maximum value that I can uh, add is basically 10 raised to power 5. It totally depends on the problem, but this is what the maximum range is, right? So it goes from minus 10 raised to power 5 to 2 into 10 raised to power 5, okay? This is what my range is the maximum range that I can have in any of the test cases for this problem, right? Now, we have seen that this problem is actually reduced to, we have to find that um, 
what is the maximum frequency of an element that I can have, right? I have to convert every element if, if I want to so that most of the elements are equal, right? Now just see here, just see here. If I know the ranges of every element, right? It's up to me that to which value I want to convert it, right? So if I know, like for example, in this case, if I know that which element has most overlapping intervals, right? Like this is one interval, two to six is one interval. It says that this value can be transformed into any value in this interval. Similarly, six can be transformed to any value in this interval and so on, right? So if I just see all the intervals and see that which is the element, right? There can be multiple elements like what is the maximum number of uh, what do you call it intervals that overlap at least at a particular point of time that will be my answer what do i mean by this two powers uh, two to six it has four four to eight it has four minus one to three it doesn't have zero to four it has four so that means four is a value which uh, which occurs in three intervals right let's choose any other value suppose i choose two right so two comes in the first interval yes two doesn't come in the second interval two comes in the third interval and two comes in the four interval that means the number of intervals in which two comes and four comes is same. So basically, we do not have to tell which element uh, is, is basic. Uh, we, we are not basically converting the array and showing that which is the uh, final element that I'll have. Rather, I just have to tell the frequency of the maximum occurring element, right? So this is what I'll do. I'll have the intervals. I'll just find their overlaps, right? Like suppose this is my array. Okay, just see. Indices are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and so on. Right? sorry this is 8 so 2 to 6 2 to 6 this is the first interval then you have 4 to 8 4 to 8 then what do you have minus 1 to 3 now just see here minus 1 our indexing starts from 0 we do not have a minus 1 right so we have to basically transform it I'll show how to transform it but suppose our array has negative index as well so this is negative index so minus 1 to 3 and then 0 to 4 0 to 4 okay so just see at if i consider minus 1 so there is only one interval which has minus 1 there is only one interval which has 0 there are two intervals which have 1 there are how many intervals three intervals which has 2 there are three intervals which have 3 three intervals which have 4 two intervals having 5 one interval having 6 1 7 1 8 okay so that means 2 3 and 4 basically these are the three elements that I, if I convert all the array elements into this, if possible, then I'll have the maximum frequency of a particular element, right? So, I, I, so three will be my answer, right? Three will be my answer because the maximum times an element can occur is three. Done. Now, if I somehow generate this big array where I can just see what are the intervals, I'll get my answer, right? Now comes the question, the range of value is this, right? The range of value is this. If I keep on doing this for all the error elements by traversing and increasing the frequency of every index, that will time out, right? 10 raised to power 5 into 10 raised to power 5, that will be roughly 10 raised to power 10. That will time out. So there is also a technique. There is also a technique to do this. What is that technique? Suppose this is my array. Okay, this is my array. I want to increment all the values from index number, suppose 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Suppose I want to increment the value of all the elements present from index number 2 to index number 5. Just taking an example, right? So what I can do? I can use the concept of prefix sum. If you're not aware of it, probably you can go through some editorials to see what is a prefix sum and all. But I can just do a plus one here and a minus one here. Why I am doing this? I'm doing this because I want to add plus one to two, three, four and five, right? So this effect, this modification that I have done at index number two should go to three, should go to four, should go to five, but should nullify. I should do something so that it nullifies at six, right? Because these are the only elements I need to modify. So what I'll do, this is the starting index increment plus one here. And if five is the ending index, then go to five plus one, that is six and do a minus one here. Do a minus one here. Remember, I want to increment all the elements by one, right? So what this will do now, if I do a prefix sum, so what will happen? Prefix sum will tell me that how many times each element has occurred or what's the frequency of element, every element, right? So how this will happen? This plus one, if I take, suppose this, these are zeros, okay? Initially, every element is zero. So this is zero, this is zero. I come here, it becomes one. Prefix sum, one, one, one. As soon as I come here, 
1 minus 1, it becomes 0, right? You should be aware of what is prefix sum. I will not go into those details, right? So I just take out the prefix sum of this, right? So this is one of the techniques, right? So for every element, I know the intervals. Like for example, when I know that it's 2 to 6, I go to index, I take an array, I go to 2, I increment plus 1 at that particular index and I go to 6 plus 1, that is 7th index and I do a minus 1 just because of the same reason what I've shown here, right? This is one of the things. The second thing is my values, the range of my value is minus 10 raised to the power 5 to 2 raised to 2 into 10 raised to the power 5. That means this value can be negative. I cannot have a negative index, right? So what I'll do, every element, whatever I have, right? Whatever is the, suppose my interval is from x to y, I'll add an offset, right? I'll do x plus offset. That means I'll shift shift this range by a particular offset. That means, suppose the value that I generate is minus 10 raised to the power 5 and my offset is, here I've taken the offset as 10 raised to the power 5. You do plus 10 raised to the power 5, it becomes 0. That means if this is the range of your values, this is uh, suppose minus x to something y, I'm shifting every element so that it comes in the range of 0 to y minus x. Getting it? Simple. You, you are just shifting it. The window size is same. It's just that you are transforming these negative values into non-negative values. So that is why we are adding offset. So let's see the code for this one, right? Uh, this is the number of elements I have. And just see, this is the frequency array. This is three, roughly 3 into 10 raised to the power 5. Why is it so? Because just see, minus 10 raised to the power 5 and 2 into 10 raised to the power 5. That means the range of my value is 3 into 10 raised to the power 5, right? Also, the maximum value is 10, 3 into 10 raised to the power 5, but I also need to go to the plus 1th index to do a minus 1, right? I have to go there. So that's why I have, so I need an index 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, this. I need an index this. For this, I, I create an array of size 3 lakh 2, okay? Now for i equals to 0, i less than n, what's the starting, uh, what do you call it, value of the interval? It's num of i minus k. Ending is this. Frequency of start plus offset plus plus frequency of end plus offset plus one. Remember, you have to go to the next index. You know, the, the index just after the ending of the interval and do a minus minus. Simple. Now, answer is frequency of zero. Just do a prefix sum. Pre fre frequency of i equals to frequency of i plus frequency of i minus one. And just keep on updating your answer. And finally, return the answer, right? So I would say it's a combination of multiple things. One of the things is you do not have to get confused with what is a subsequence here, right? You just have to see that uh, how many equal values, maximum number of equal values I can have in my array. First thing, then you have to use this concept of updating the values in interval. The third thing is you have to transform this particular range, the negative range into positive range by doing something, right? So we take the concept of an offset, right? This is what we do. And finally, we get our answer, right? So I, I hope you learned uh, some new things in this video, right? So uh, if, you, if you like this video, do support it by giving up a thumbs up. Do subscribe to the channel as well. In case you have any queries related to the solution, do let me know. I'll revert on each one of them. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.